Hello everyone, welcome again to another video on how one can prepare efficiently and effectively for PhD entrance exams. Of course, this is the subject of our video today and we are also going to review some of the questions of last year's. Now, lately I've been getting a lot of emails asking about how to start revising. First, thank you for the trust and contacting me. Now, although we might feel we are ready to embark on a journey to prepare for those exams, that very starting point of often is so arid. In this video, I would like to share my personal experience with that. Of course, it remains a personal preference and may or may not suit some students. Well, first, let us see the most frequent misconceptions about revision, and we take that as a starting point. Well, First, I often read comments in social media where students are asking about lessons. Although university lectures are not simple lessons like those we find in secondary school. So, second thing, often uh, they tell me that I am reading, using that as an equivalent to I am revising. And we know that blind reading is simply is going to, in fact, cause more problems. Third, uh, some tell me I am writing summaries of lessons, so I think this is similar to I am reading blindly. It may help, but it's going always to be so tiring. So the, what we said, in fact, is good. Mostly is going to result in revision with with no clear end. That eventually is going to lead to frustration and, of course, to giving up. This is what's going to happen. So, what a student needs to know is that he or she should look for research access that has been dealt with instead of lessons. Now, doing that has also to be accompanied with proposal reading. It's going to proposal reading that is going to be oriented to one goal, which is problem solving. Of course, in our case, is answering questions, or let me say problems of pre previous PhD questions. The end result will be developing better writing styles, since both writing and reading are going to be oriented towards one goal. Furthermore, that will end in better understanding of the concepts and how they are related. All in all, a student will be on a clear and a guided revision. Now, fortunately now, there exists a considerable number of questions of previous PhD contests. These can be thought of as a very good starting point for revision. Now, in this video, I have tried to collect most of the queries dealing either with didactics or methodology. The idea is to try dissect the questions to attain the main concept involved. For instance, uh, let's look at 2013 question. The teacher role in the classroom has been shifting over time. So we can see here that we, if we review the question, we know that the basic idea is teacher role and, of course, learner role related with that. Now, we follow the same procedures with the second question that reads, uh, the phrase learner-centered makes it sound as if the teacher is not in control of the classroom. In the light of your reading, discuss fully the notion of learner-centeredness and its application in a country like Algeria. As you can see here, that there is a link between the 2011 question and 2013 question. Now, we go to the third one and we see that it's mainly talking about classroom management and we do the same thing and we, we log the basic idea. We simply try to, uh, to take notes. Now, the same steps. Uh, have to be followed with other questions, keeping track of the concept that needs to be studied. As for example, we have the uh, question of 2015 uh, that is going to deal uh, mainly with culture, teaching and method. We have that of 2014. We have also is going to talk about uh, teacher role, learner's role in general, so we don't need to repeat that. 2015, it's we're talking about, we're talking about uh, also again teaching methods. We move uh, next to uh, how did psycholinguistics and sociolinguistics influence language uh, learning and teaching, of course, at the same time. So we add that to applied linguistics and uh, we log that, that we need to uh, look for psycholinguistic and sociolinguistics, the same thing, 2015, etc., etc. So what we need, of course, always the end goal is to write 
systematically about these concepts. We write each concept and we need to write about them. So if you are revising, you need to write at least one paragraph for each idea, for about one idea. Now, of course, the best thing is to write an essay, a fully full essay about a single idea. And there is another important aspect is to look for when reviewing question is any discernible pattern. For example, I have realized that uh, lately, for example, last year questions was to talk about uh, there was an emphasis about technology. Even we, when we go to last year questions, we find that uh, there was the talk about COVID-19 and the current pandemic, of course, and how this is affecting uh, learning and teaching of a course at universities and schools, etc. So this is what you need to do. You need to read, you need to uh, write, and this writing is going to be systematically oriented towards solving a problem. Now, next, of course, finally, I do strongly believe that answering this question would be great help to those who are determined to succeed. Of course, I'm going to leave the, uh, this presentation down with a link. You find, it, you find it with the video. And at the end, if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. I also am very happy to answer any questions if you write it down. So feel free to comment and see you in the next video.